Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and as you can see today, we're going to do something that's just a little bit different. Behind me is a very large, stretched canvas, 4x8 feet long. I had to have it custom made a couple weeks ago. And we're going to do an extremely large landscape painting, broken up over the next few weeks. If you're really excited about this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. Alright, let's get started. Now I'm going to start off with our normal gel medium and white mix. Usually I put this on before we get started, you know, for the video, but I thought I'd just show you doing it on something so big today. I'm going to scrub it around. This normally takes about two minutes. It looks like it's going to take closer to probably ten minutes because I want a nice coating. I do have a very detailed drawing. There's just no way I'm going to stay on track without a detailed drawing. There, because, oh, once you get up here you can't see what you're doing, so you have to make all your decisions from way back where you guys are standing. That's where you make your decisions, you come up here and then you sort of do them. And that's what I'm going to do. So let me just coat my canvas with this medium. My brush is a little dirty, that's why you see the gray. And then I'll come right back. Next I'll load a lot of blue, white, and just a touch of red and black into it as well, into the two inch brush. It feels weird loading this much paint. All right, I'm gonna come right up here to the top and drop in my blue sky. But you have to remember I'm loading a ton of paint onto the brush, but it's less than a dusting for the size that I'm doing here. So it's gonna take a lot of paint, but that's all right. This is what the size of probably 10 little 18 by 24s, something like that. There. Again, this is a this is a four by eight foot, so it's eight feet across and four feet high. It's a big, big canvas. It's a stretched, real deal stretched canvas. It's really cool. And it's as tight as can be. I have no idea how they got it so tight. There. And I'm just gonna work it down. Put a little more medium on there than I normally would just so that I don't have to burn my forearm <laughs> trying to grind this in. And I know I am going to let it dry uh, in between because we're going to work on this over the next probably a couple months, depending on, I, I know we probably won't do it every week, but maybe change it every other week. Maybe do our normal painting, normal studio, then jump over here and do our, do our big one. So we'll see how that goes. Next I'll take our filbert brush through some white and maybe just tint it with a little black, touch of red. What that'll do for us, it gives us a, oh, a nice little shadow color for some clouds. Lots of clouds. Big canvas, lots of clouds. Okay, here we go. I'm going to, let's see, let's just pick an area. I gotta start somewhere. Start right here. And drop in our clouds. They need a little blue. That's not, there. See, that looks a little nicer with some blue. So now I'm gonna use large strokes to block in clouds, just like we would use smaller strokes to block in clouds on a smaller canvas size. Okay, now I don't think I mentioned yet, you guys are probably wondering where I'm getting these ideas. In fact, they probably look familiar to some of you guys. Well, on this side, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a painting, I can't quite remember the title of it, but I'll put, I'll put the titles and the links in the description and also on screen for you. And you can go check out, these are actually YouTube videos. So what, I'm, what I've done is I've combined a couple of YouTube videos, changed them up a little. I'm gonna have uh, some of the real mountains that we did in Yosemite. And I kind of, I twisted them around a little. And we also have this painting, which has a waterfall in it, which I'll give you the link for. There. And this way I've done a lot of these things before in a smaller canvas, so I'm more confident with them. That's a good reason to pick something that you know how to do for something that's so big. Because you can't afford to make a lot of mistakes on here and have it done anytime soon. <laughs> so, there. Now I'm going to load up a lot of white into my filbert brush. And I'm not really worried about tinting it because it's the same brush I was using to scrub in the clouds. I think just whatever's left in it will be fine. Alrighty. I'm going to just scrub in little bit of cloud action up here. Now my light is going to come across like this. And I know that the, the paintings that I'm using as reference is working from, their light sources are not the same. So obviously I'm not copying them. I'm just trying to make them, I've got to have something to look at, you know what I mean? In fact, I have the original sitting just off to the left here. And that's very helpful, extremely helpful to me, because I won't, I won't have any big major composition problems that way. At least I shouldn't. There. Otherwise, well, who knows where it might end up. 
Okay, I'm probably going a little slower than I should. I'm just kind of getting warmed up starting these clouds. There. This kind of reminds me of some of the murals that I've done, but not really. This is kind of different too. Number one, it's a lot smaller. And, and I'm using real brushes and oil paint and, and these t same techniques. This feels a lot like, you know, regular painting too. So it's kind of interesting, kind of interesting. This is absolutely the biggest stretch canvas I've ever done. So <laughs> you guys are not missing out. I share just about everything with you. As far as all the paintings that I do, you see just about everything that I do. So that's kind of fun. You're in on the, on the very first, well, the, at least the biggest, biggest stretch canvas project I've ever done. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on our beautiful mountain back here. I've got just a light, a light little yellow and white color going on here. And I went ahead and underpainted this. And although this is not maybe nor the normal way, I would paint a, a landscape. What I'm going to do here is highlight in detail and finish this mountain before moving on to the others, before even underpainting the others. Because this is so big, I want to make sure that I have the right idea, the right colors, the right brush strokes, and then I'll just sort of copy that throughout the rest of the composition. Got to make sure that I, that I like it first. Okay. Good stuff. Stuff. Mm, look at that. Isn't that cool? All right. Let's sort of maybe just, yeah, just drag this back. <laughs> there we go. Kind of hold down the canvas. Nice. As we start going toward the middle, it's going to start getting a little bouncy. So I'll try to keep some pressure on it. And that won't be hard because it'll dry throughout the, throughout the weeks that we paint on it. Nice. Now I've changed to the three quarter brush from the filbert because I'm we're gonna start getting some larger effects up here. I have this beautiful soft golden color, very similar to the one we were using over here, maybe just a little more color and a little less pale. All right, right over here, I'm gonna do my best to work quickly so we don't get a tight painting, although that is easier <laughs> said than done. Oh, how about right over here? This is good stuff. I'm gonna to try to stand back as far as I can because that's just an advantage. When you try to do that, especially, I mean, the larger you paint, the harder it is to see it up close. I'm also always looking at my reference painting to make sure I've kind of got my brush strokes where I want them. Good stuff. Oop, it slides right off, right in that area. Good. <laughs> All right, this is kind of fun. Kind of fun. All right, let's take a little... I'm going to change the color, take a little more red, because you can, you can start working some red into this as it comes forward. Not a lot. I don't want to see red. I just want to warm the color up. There we go. And of course, the warmer the color, the, the closer it looks to you. You see why we needed the detail, or the detail round, the three-quarter brush, because it's bigger. There. And it gives us a little bit larger of a brush stroke, which is good for this mountain. Now I'm going to go ahead and see about dropping in just a little bit of our mountain up here. Actually, probably block in the whole thing. I just started here. I'm trying to keep some of my trees, some of my trees kind of blank so that I remember where to put them. I'll stabilize the canvas because as you get toward the middle, there's just all that pressure. It gets so floppy. Pretty amazing though that, <laughs> amazing that we're painting on a canvas this big. I love it. All right, this is going to be kind of a a little masterpiece for a gallery. That's the idea, at least. Maybe put it up in a couple galleries and see what happens. There. All right, this is pretty fun. Just underpainting. I'm going to go all the way across, and then we'll come back and highlight. Now I'm going to work on the face of this mountain here. I'm using the little three-quarter brush. There. And I spent just a few minutes sketching like I usually do, just on a slightly larger scale. And that just helps to make sure that I got the brush strokes going in the right spot. That's important, you know. Big or small, you gotta have the brush strokes going where they're supposed to. Alright, maybe right over here we can do it's not probably not too early to start thinking about these little rocks here. I guess not. It might be. <laughs> Depends on what we do. I think we're gonna have our little waterfall in pretty soon, so I wanna make sure this mountain is pretty well complete before we do that. 
because I really want to tackle that waterfall. It's really pretty. This is a tree. I left it open so I would know where it was. And also we don't have to waste our time painting it in. Okay, right up here. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fun. So just keep this brush moving and, and enjoy painting. There. Now I decided just to take a quick break from painting over there and jumped back over here to a little grass, a little highlight. And now I'm going to be working on some beautiful trees. I just, you know, with painting this big, you can, you can do whatever you want, really, whenever you want, as long as you're working on the same plane, which we are. So I decided to hop right over here and just do some trees. I got tired of painting so many highlights of mountains. So, And I think this will be cool. I think it'll kind of set us up and I may even make over there a little easier. We'll see. Probably won't, but just might. There. This is actually a lot of fun. I'm enjoying this. And what you can do is, is to make this even better, is to kind of take these trees and manipulate the way your mountain goes using these trees. Make them follow the ridge line, right? There. Mm, wow. And then, of course, you want to lighten the color just a little. And maybe come right back up here. I've got my, my palette on that table over there. I'm just I'm going one-handed today. There. I got tired of holding it. But that's okay. See, I'm, I'm going to be a little more loose than normal. Maybe take a couple of weeks to do this area. We may have to save this, finish this up next next time. Actually, we'll probably won't do these every week. Like I said, we'll probably do them, you know, every couple weeks. Depends on what you guys want. Let me know because you got to tell me what you want. There. Tell me if you if you want to see more of these. We can do a few more. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drop in a waterfall up here. I've been waiting to do this for a little while, so I think it's just about time. I want to make sure we get it done today. And now maybe there's a bit there. Maybe another bit here. I'm going to refine this. I'm just sort of plopping in some color where I think it probably would go. And maybe just a little chunk there. And a slice there. Okay, so then I'll, I'll work with that and kind of make that look more like a waterfall. I just wanted to get the color in there. Great. This is just the underpainting, nothing more. Okay, and then I we work on that, even let it dry and come back and do a lot of detail, depending on how much we want. I'm not too sure how much we want just yet. Probably quite a bit there, because it's so big. We want a lot of detail in this painting. Run a little bit of this color right along the bottom. That waterfall color, nice. All right, now, right into some of our browns. And I wanna just slice right along the top here and create a couple of, well, especially right there, a couple of rocks there where you just see the edge of the rock. Mm, nice. That holds the waterfall in place and makes it look very natural. Now one of the last things I want to do up here today is kind of finish out the, the initial highlight of this mountain. It will, we'll probably come back and add some more. I know we'll come back and add a lot more later and different details in the shadows. I'm just trying to get this sort of figured out. And there we go. I'm just dropping on a lot of different color, but kind of keeping it a little bit subtle for now. We'll punch up the highlight in a different episode. There, this is about all I can do today. I'm getting tired. This is a lot of painting. <laughs> When you do these big, big paintings, it's amazing how much effort it takes. The little ones are quite a bit easier. That's why I'm breaking it up into a few episodes. All right, well, that's all we're going to do for episode one of our very large painting. Now, next time, we'll go ahead and pick up right where we left off. Of course, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more painting videos. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching.